So on Fridays, we want to um, have our devotions be about prayer. Uh, sometimes it'll be a short little message on prayer. Sometimes it'll be just a prayer uh, for different needs. Some of the things that you guys send in uh, through our app or by email or however you want to get connected to us, we're going to uh, bring up some of these prayers if you're, if you're going to be fine with, with making it public. So Friday is, is going to be focused on prayer. Today, I just wanted to share uh, a, a few thoughts on the topic of prayer. Um, I don't know if it's just me, uh, probably not just me, I think in general, um, when it comes to um, trying to figure out how do you pray uh, in a way that God hears, how do you pray in a way that is effective, this topic uh, is one of the most debatable topics in Christianity. Um, you have some people saying that prayer is something that, you know, all you have to do is declare. And if you have enough, you know, faith, then, then that prayer is just going to happen. Uh, it's a promise by God, from God. Uh, other people say, you know what, it, it, you, you pray, but, you know, God already has everything figured out. Um, so don't even, you know, you just have this broad, two extremes and, and then somewhere we all fall in the middle or maybe somebody on, on one of these extremes. Now, my point today is not to try to figure out what the answer is. My point is um, it's been debatable for a long time because I don't think there's a perfectly straightforward answer for every person, for every situation. I really do think that, you know, even looking in Scripture at all the different verses about prayer in the New Testament, um, there are so many different scenarios that it brings up. Uh, about different types of prayers that you slowly get this understanding that every prayer is unique and every prayer um, is is unique to a person to their situation and you can't just paint every prayer in one kind of broad stroke there are prayers that God doesn't hear because you haven't forgiven somebody and you're being a hypocrite before God that's scriptural there's a prayer where you know what God doesn't listen to you this is from James because you're asking with the wrong motives you're, you're asking for something selfish for your own pleasure. God says that, you know, that's, that's not something that God hears. Uh, you know, so those are already two very different situations. There's a different place where it says, hey, you know what? Be persistent in prayer. Uh, persist in prayer. In another place, it says, you know what? Uh, anything you ask um, by His will, in His will, God's going to answer. So you have so many different scenarios, so many different kind of, um, I don't know, takes, even scripturally, on prayer. And, and that leads me to believe that every prayer is different. And every prayer has, has something that God looks at that maybe we don't fully understand. Where does that leave us practically, though, in our prayer life? How, how do we approach prayer then? I think that um, having faith in prayer is, is, is something very that goes down to the basics. Um, how do you approach prayer? You just trust God. <laughs> that, that's it. Uh, trust God um, that He hears you, number one. Number two, that um, He knows what's best for you and He's going to answer the prayer in the way that is going to be according to His will and a blessing to you. Sometimes that lines up with what you're asking. Sometimes it doesn't. Somewhere in our prayer, we have to give up ownership over our situation. Somewhere when we pray, we have to give up ownership over even the result that we want. Somewhere we have to give up ownership of, of who we are, our will, into God's hands. I mean, it, it, isn't that what Jesus did in His prayer? I mean, think about it. Jesus came in Gethsemane. We referenced this earlier this week, but Jesus prayed in Gethsemane to the Father and he gave up ownership of his situation to the Father. In fact, what he asked of the Father, he ended up not getting the result that he asked for. He wanted the cup to pass him. That was his request. But somewhere in that prayer, he gave up ownership and said, okay, it's your will. And so I'm, we're talking about Jesus' prayer to his Father. In our life, how do we approach prayer it's really that, coming to God and saying, Lord, this is where I'm at. This is what my prayer request is, but I trust in you. I feel like sometimes the deepest part, or in my experience, the deepest prayers I've had, the ones that I've felt the most empowering were the ones that were of complete surrender. Where I prayed, and I definitely desperately needed an answer in something, but somewhere 
I surrendered that whole situation into God's hands. And to me, maybe that's the point of prayer, is surrendering the situation by petitioning God, by just leaving it in His hands, by building up your faith and, and getting in line with His, faith, with, with His will, whatever it may be. But all these different versions of surrender. In fact, I, to finish off, I'd read a classic verse from Philippians chapter 4, and this is verse 6 through 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. This verse covers everything we've talked about. It says that anything that you're anxious about, it assumes that you're going to be anxious. Don't be anxious about it. Every situation that you encounter, every single need that you may have that you're like, man, I got to bring this to God or only God can help me or what would God want in this situation? Every situation, prayer and petition. So it's not just saying, well, God has it. I don't even need to pray. No, praying and petitioning God. Make it known what you're asking of God. With thanksgiving, once again, a different type of posture and attitude, present these requests to God. And so what happens then? The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Once again, the result of this type of prayer of surrender through petition or through just falling in line with God's will results in a peace that surpasses your comprehension in another version it says. In this case, your understanding. That means that if my understanding is, look, this is the situation I'm in. I need healing. I need healing. That's what I need right now, practically. When I make that petition to God and I say, God, heal me. Somewhere, the Bible says here that you are going to receive a peace that can transcend that understanding. My understanding is, if I get healed, then everything will be good. If I get healed then I will be peaceful. I will have peace in my heart and everything will be good. But here it says that instead, God gives you something that's beyond just circumstantial. He gives you a peace that may transcend even your own understanding of what a good resolution to your situation would be. And that will guard your heart and your mind. Meaning, that type of prayer has literally a supernatural result. It changes the way you think. It changes the way you even feel inside. It changes. I mean, you can't do that with just an idea or a thought. Only the Spirit of God can do that in prayer. He creates a supernatural peace. And so, in everything that I've been talking about today, I'm making one strong point today. No matter how you pray, no matter where you fall on that spectrum, somewhere we all have to agree on the fact that God is God. He hears us. He loves us, and He's the only one qualified to hold our situation. And so when we come to Him in prayer, it's literally about surrendering it and trusting. Having faith is just trusting that whatever God decides, whatever His intention is, just like Jesus did, everything is going to be good because God has us in our hands. That's why the Bible says, don't be anxious about anything. We have an amazing Father. And so um, with that in mind, you know, uh, I would like to pray today uh, about a couple things, and I would ask you to join me in this prayer. Um, I'm going to ask Vlad, who's sitting behind the camera, also to join me in this prayer. Um, if, we, if we're going to pray, it'd be cool to pray for, for the families that are already affected by coronavirus. We've probably heard already a couple different people um, that you know or maybe you know of or you've seen shared on, 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 on social media. Um, people who are affected by it. And um, we've also heard about folks that have had uh, loved ones pass away, not from coronavirus, but from just regular life, old age or whatever. And um, they're also grieving and they're not even able to hold funerals right now. And so there's all of this pain in, in, in families. Um, and what I would like to ask is, is if we could just pray for God's peace to be in their situation. And then second, um, we're keeping up our promise. And, and and we feel it's a call to action from the Spirit to support all of the folks that are working in our, in the hospitals, in the medical um, industry, if you will, the, the, the nurses, the, the respiratory therapists, doctors, and whoever else, whatever it is that you do, uh, we wanna pray for people like that. And so let's pray for families and let's pray uh, for them as well. Lord, um, 
we just come before you, God, and um, we know, God, that you see everything as it is. Uh, we're not going to inform you of anything that you don't know. We know that you hear our prayers, um, and you know what we're going to say before we even say it, Lord. That being said, Father, um, we trust, God, that you hear our prayers, that th these prayers matter, and they, they, they can make a difference, God. Lord, we come before you right now to bring, Lord, the families that are in pain today, God, the folks that are dealing with loss or dealing with, with just pain in their heart, God, or grief, Lord. We pray, Father, that you would bring that supernatural peace, God. Our words cannot do anything. Um, our words don't have that type of power, God. Nothing, Lord, that we can do can, can help somebody in pain, Father, and in grief. But we know, Father, that your spirit is near to those who are brokenhearted. Your spirit is near to those who are, in, are hurting, Lord, or are in need, Jesus. And so we ask that your spirit would minister to them right now, God. Minister, Father, to, to every person, God, who is experiencing that. That your peace, Lord, would enter into their heart, into their mind. It would guard them, Father. I pray in the name of Jesus, that right now, Lord, supernaturally, God, they would receive that peace, Lord, knowing, Father, the truth that you, Lord, are in control of every situation, no matter how painful it is, God. We bless them, Father, in your name, Jesus. We bless them, God, in the most reliable name that there is, God. Thank you so much, Father, for hearing us, God. We also, Lord, continue to pray, Father, for all of those folks, Lord, um, who are who are on the front lines right now, God. We pray, Lord, that you would bless them, God. We pray, Lord, that you would bless their families, Father. Lord, hey, uh, number one, that anxiety that they may be feeling, God, about the, the, the virus or, or anything, God, that anxiety. We pray against it in the name of Jesus. And once again, we, Lord ask, Lord, that your peace would guard their hearts and their minds, Lord, that you would, Lord, um, give them a spirit of boldness, Lord, to, to serve God. This isn't just their job, Father. It is a ministry, God. So I pray in the name of Jesus, open, Lord, their eyes to see it all the way, Father, that you are with them, God, that you can bless them and embolden them, God, and anoint them, Father, where they are serving right now, God. We pray in the name of Jesus. Bless their families, God. Bless the sacrifices that everyone is making, Lord. We thank you, Father. Father, and, and we just want to praise you, Father, and glorify you, Jesus, for the fact that you know us, you hear us, you're near to us, God, um, and that we have a purpose in every day, God. We thank you. We honor you. Amen. God bless you guys. And uh, once again, look below. There's a playlist uh, for worship songs if you want. God bless.